Why do you make such an effort to climb the cliffs, young man? The winged ones who live on this island have the power of flight. Well, none of them is that You could have it too, <laughs> if you'd only eat okay. a berry from this magical flying nightshade bush. But nightshade is poisonous. <laughs> It's, it's not even being subtle anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the sweet berries will make you float like a petal on the wind. Just, but see, I couldn't have gotten up here anyways with that because the bush is up here. I know, right? <laughs> It's not like you, like, tossed us some berries. Yeah, why didn't you toss us some? They're so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm, 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 I'm... Stranger, trust me. Think of what I'm offering you. I'm, I'm sure Perhaps something... one of the leaves? Not the leaves, dearie. The berries on top of the bush. I didn't know it asked you for clicking too low. All right. I'll try <laughs> some of your berries. Clearly, something about them being mashed but makes them oh, not poisonous, goody. right? Eat quickly, dear boy, <laughs> and I'll show you the way to the Lord and Lady of this Isle. What? <laughs> Slightly bitter, pretty one. He thinks we're pretty. Oh, this is the one. <laughs> oh, you know how I was, I was like, it's these not being subtle anymore. And then there's some land I have for sale on the Death Bogs of Tamir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <clears throat> That's funny. So, yeah, the, he's not being subtle, and it's Come not... Stranger? Not even very sure that. And it's, it's, de it's definitely not an accident that he's not being subtle. <laughs> <laughs> I think... People used to think that, um... You offend me! I try to help you and you insist on being rude! <laughs> I think people used to think tomatoes were poisonous because they're also part of the nightshade family. Hmm. Yeah. Alright then! Stay tied to the ground like a load of lead! See if I care! You... 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 human... Once again, <laughs> you're being subtle. <laughs> The old woman just disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Perhaps those berries are even more powerful than she led Alexander to believe. It says the narrator who sasses us if we eat one. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she she's like, fine, I'm leaving. You'll like never fly and then leaves the supposed magic bush behind that like has <laughs> the berries that make you fly. So... Can you go into the, the hole next to the berry bush? I see. Alexander crawls through the small opening in the rock. Alexander finds oh, himself gosh. in a dark cave. Uh, I think we need a light. Can we light our thing? Where am I? How do I... <laughs> Alexander takes the candle from his tinder box and uses the flint in the box to light it. Boom. Yay! I can see myself. Can see oh, there's a hole. Alexander crawls through the opening in the rock. The lighting in Ooh, this part of the cave is better. Alexander extinguishes the candle's flame and places it back in his pack. What was that? What's that? What's what? Is that, is that just the window? A natural window-like opening in the rock provides a view to the outside world. A peppermint plant grows on the window's ledge. <gasps> peppermint? Peppermint? I like peppermint tea. What's Can we some? grab some leaves? Let's drink some. Alexander takes a few leaves from the plant. As he does so, a strong smell of peppermint is released. Ah. Ah. Delicious. 
Alexander is standing in a second room of the cave. A natural window to the outside world provides a little more light here and even helps clear the musty smell. I'm sure the peppermint bush right next to it also helps. <laughs> <laughs> there's no going that direction. Oh, I guess there's no, I guess that's all. It's dangerous to go alone! Alexander crawls back into the first room of the cave. Corvid said that was mercury. Tomatoes absorb mercury, causing a misconception. Ah! Oh my goodness! Alexander takes the candle from his tinder box and uses the flint in the box to light it. Oh, can you not like cross the room if he can't see? I'm honestly, that's ex honestly exactly what I was wondering. I was like, do you need this or there's just hope? Alexander <laughs> crawls back through the passage to the top of the cliffs. Like, I, I can understand needing it because of all those spiky, like, stalactites. <laughs> um, but it's not like there was a moment where he, like, perished because of... <laughs> Let's knock on the big door. Peppermint! A quad! <laughs> a quad! Peppermint! P -p -p Peppermint. No. The huge doors are locked tight. Somebody obviously wants to keep something out or something in. The locked tight. <laughs> well, I guess there's nowhere to go uh, but up here. Eh? No, no way to go but up. We are going higher up into the mountain. Hey. Hope we don't need a cloak. Look, an intruder! Hold! Hey. How did you get up here, human? I climbed the cliffs. That is not possible. No one has solved the cliffs of logic in several centuries. And if the cliffs like were to be solved, Caesar. it would certainly not be by a human. I... I didn't mean to trespass. I only wanted to visit this beautiful island. No visitors have been welcome on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain in years. Not since the Red and White Queens had spies in the guise of friendly visitors steal our island's sacred golden fleece. But we will not display such foolish trust again. You will have to answer to Lord Azure and Lady Ariel. They will determine what will be done with you. I can assure you, it will not be pleasant. I like how he's like, I didn't mean to trespass. I only, like, meticulously all of your security locks. Put a pin in that. <laughs> With what trickery did you master the cliffs of logic and reach the city of the winged ones? Only the magic of clear thought, my lord. I meant no harm. The cliffs of logic? It is the sacred oracle's prophecy, Azure. Yes, Ariel. Sure. It is lucky for you, human, that climbing the cliffs of logic is part of a prophecy that I cannot ignore. We have just been ordered by Wazir Al Hazred himself to dispose of any strangers that might land on our fair isle. But the prophecy would have a different fate befall you. The prophecy predicts that whosoever climbs the cliffs of logic will defeat the Minotaur. The Minotaur has violated our sacred catacombs and eats our young in sacrifice. Our own daughter, Lady Celeste, was taken there only this morning as his most recently demanded offering. Wait. A dilemma, then. Whom shall I obey in regards to your fate? The Oracle or the Crown? But since Al Hazred did not dictate how I was to dispose of intruders, and since you cannot possibly survive the catacombs, your imprisonment there should serve both purposes quite admirably. I will not resist you in this, my lord. I shall do my best to save your daughter. Hmm. First, I must tell you that the catacombs are a labyrinth of rooms, a place of exceeding danger. You will need many tools and clear wits to survive it. I am ready. Very well. My guards will take you there now. You seem courageous enough, but the catacombs will determine how brave you really are.
We sentenced you to death, but here are some uh, advice so you can survive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he wants us to save our daughter more than he wants him, us to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you tell Lord Azure you were ready and willing to face the catacombs? No one is ever ready, and only a fool could be willing. And you are far wiser, I suppose, to leave a maiden to die? To not fight this plague on your own people? Bravery and suicide are two different things, human. You will have a chance to renounce your choice soon enough, when you lay trembling under the Minotaur's hooves. We shall see. Thanks for the escort. We only escort you to your death. May the fates make it quick so that you do not have to scream long. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> and they just like toss you in. The catacombs entrance door is locked from the outside by the winged one's guards. It seems that leaving the catacombs by that door is not an option. Hmm. So. There's a dead body there. <laughs> so, King's Quest 6. Is in general nicer about not becoming completely unwinnable if you do things wrong? Uh, but it's still a Sierra game, so if you get thrown in here before you're ready, the game is unwinnable. <laughs> <laughs> So if I, I have to if I have to load uh let's say what I have to load peppermint acquired. Mm hmm Uh that's why. Um What was the name of the the lady we wanna marry? Um uh, Kasima. Kasima, okay. The names are like the boat started with a C, so I got confused. <laughs> I'm like, wait, is that? Isn't that the lady? <laughs> so a while ago, Tails was like, Cliffs of Logic. It lips, and I say, Cliffs of Logic! Exclamation mark. <laughs> Everyone's excited about Celeste. I like <laughs> how they're like, how did you get past the Cliffs of Logic? And he's like, with a clear mind and free thought. And, and meanwhile, the players like, like, Tossing and turning through the the manual. <laughs> <laughs> um. Tails is like, okay, I have to run out for a minute. Looks at Zero specifically. Behave, everyone. <laughs> hey. I am always behaved. The walls of the catacombs are made of massive stone tiles. That's the north wall of the room. <laughs> Am I behaved Niches. well? <laughs> Niches in the wall form stone burial beds. Ancient bones lie crumbling on the unyielding rock. Are you Let's, busts uh... in with? Oh, we're in the labyrinth now. Yeah, we're fi we're finally in the place that the um, thumbnails at. Yeah. Let's uh, let's go up. Let's go. Up. <laughs> they ran through the door. Oh, <laughs> friend. Niches in the same. Same. The walls of the catacombs are made of massive stone tiles. That's Niches. the noise. Alexander Niches. hears the distant sounds of a wild animal somewhere in the maze of rooms. <gasps> he can hear the distant razzle dazzle. <laughs> right. He just like he just like listens really intently, and in the distance he hears. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally interrupted, but the audio there was an audio of like the clip clop of foods. Oh, oh. Another, another fork. Um, let's just keep going up. There it is. Alexander. Ooh. Oh, I should have read that. It was different. Ah. Uh. I was a dead end for a second. Uh, pay attention to <laughs> the, the, the this because if it goes across the bottom, then we it's a wall. But if there's a hole in it like this, then it's a doorway. 
Oh. Huh. Hmm. Okay. Somewhere far off into the catacombs, the sounds of hooves faintly echo. So I so I'll, also there's, there's this is there's a maze. Is that really a maze? But there's another segment like this in King's Quest V in the desert. Yeah. Um, and and you knew of that. You had to like go to the right place, or, or you die of dehydration very very quickly. Yeah. Uh, this one. Well, we're not gonna die of dehydration. Yeah, this one is nicer because you don't have as much of a like time limit. Mm hmm. Uh, the the downside is, you know, Minotaur running around, and I don't know if it's. He can run in on you and kill you. I don't know what causes it. I don't know if it's staying around, knocking about randomly too long, or if it's like, like here when it said it. Alexander hears the distant sounds of a wild animal somewhere in the maze of rooms. Like, like the first one it said when you first walking in, it sound it made it sound like he was further away than it did that time. Oh. So it may be like tell him to be like <laughs> how close the Minotaur is. What's are we trying to find the Minotaur or avoid him? Oh. Oh gosh. Oh. Uh, we are trying to find him, uh, but in a place where he's not just gonna like impale us with his horns. <laughs> <laughs> like, like maybe, maybe like sneak up on him or something. Hmm. So. So. I see some symbols. On the ground. This is insane. Uh, clearly we just walk across, right? Yeah, of course. Alexander feels the tile he's standing on shift beneath his feet. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> it was so sudden. Tickets only. Next. Three spikes and you're out. Mm. I don't know if it was in the first stream or on the, um image for this, but somebody made that pun at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we clearly can't go that way. Right? Maybe. Can you press, like, specific ones on the ground? Oh, yeah. Well, they all seem deadly, because, like, you stepped on that flower one. And it shot arrows at you. That one looks like a Grim Reaper sickle, and that <laughs> one over there is a Jolly Roger. Um, there's spikes, or maybe those are crowns. <laughs> maybe you step on the like crown, and then the bird, and then the crown. But then, like, then there's nowhere else to go that isn't death. Do we have anything in our pocket that can help? We actually have something in the guidebook, the the, the manual that can help. Oh, the catacombs. The catacombs. An another remnant of the ancient one's culture. The catacombs is tra 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 tragically, tragically inaccessible to visitors today. I can read, guys, but they like hyphenated it in a weird way. <laughs> okay. The catacombs held the burial chambers of the ancient ones and are said to be designed as a giant labyrinth to protect their tombs from looters. The ancient ones built death traps into the catacombs and filled it with dead end paths, maze like corridors, and rooms where secret knowledge is needed to pass. The Ancient Ones were close to mastering the secrets of the catacombs some years ago, when a minotaur, taking an instant liking to the dark, <laughs> funeral place, decided to take up the residence. At first, the kingdom attempted to regain the hostage ar hostaged artifact, but in between the dangers of the catacombs itself and the minotaur's stealth and treachery, the losses became too grave. <laughs> Between between the dangers of the catacombs itself and the Minotaur's razzle dazzle, the losses <laughs> became too grave to continue the struggle, and the Minotaur was left to his prize. 
Uh, since then, the catacombs have been bolted shut. It is one of the great sorrows of the kingdom that each year the Minotaur demands more razzle dazzle. All right, let's see. The catacombs. Um. Uh, blah blah blah. Shows the the oh three roses laid upon the bower, a scythe for he who cuts the flower, a crown a dove, most noble race. Thy bones make sacred this dread place. Um, are those all the ones that will kill you? Three roses laid upon the bow. So you stepped on one of the roses and it shot bows at you. Uh, scythe for he who cuts the flower. It, um, it's actually, uh, I didn't like specifically the two, two things. Uh, I didn't like specifically step in, I just clicked on the other thing. Oh. Uh, it's, it's actually like the order you're supposed to step on. Oh, okay. Three flowers. And this one, you cannot progress by stepping on it first. Okay. So you have to step on the one above you first? Or the one below. No, it has to be the one be above, right? Because, like, if you huh? step on the one below. You can't get to that. Oh, I guess. Actually, oh, never mind. It's three roses, a scythe, a crown. A crown. A dove. A dove. And bones. Um, okay, so it's that, that, that. And then the one above you, and the crown, the bird next to it. No, no, the bottom crown. No! Oh, oh really? Huh? Oh. Oh, maybe you're right. I, I think they're both right, because you could have gone uh, the scythe, the crown, the bird, the bones. And here you can go the crown, scythe, the crown. What's, the um, what's most noble race supposed to mean? That's a good question. And then the bones. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction that the most noble race refers to the dove. Oh, okay. If I die here, then I'm wrong. <laughs> uh huh. Oh, yay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you.